this fine September day. Glad to see everyone here. It's really nice to be back. If you would, join me to the call of worship, please. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. God of creation, you have made us to be nourished in your care, and you test us so that we will turn again and again toward your gifts. Show us how to love our neighbors and ourselves. Teach us to delight in your law so that we will know the way of the gratitude and thanksgiving. In the name of Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. And we will have our children's moment now. Oh, is there a song? Okay, we'll do the song. We'll have a song before our children's moment. Excuse us. We have one person who officially is a child and a whole bunch out there who think they are. So, I have a question. Do you know what that is? No? Anybody know what it is? You can't talk. Anybody know what this is? Charger. This is a charger. Okay? 
it works with my phone. So if I have it plugged in, I can just set my phone on it and it will charge it. Did you know that? It's gotten a lot better. You don't have to plug it in all the time. Did we plug that in? Did you? No, I'm asking. No? Okay, well, what I want to take this is I want to think this is kind of like our relationship with God. Okay? If this is me, sorry, if this is me, okay, and I worked for a while, but after a little bit, I don't have any power left. But if I keep my relationship with God positive and live in God's love and love God back, I get recharged. It's kind of like why we're here today. Kind of get recharged for this next week. Because of God's love for us, we know that this will always be here and always be working. We won't need a plug. We, we have a direct relationship with God. And all we have to do is come to God for our charge. Oh, yes. I'm going to back up. Uh, we didn't do announcements, so I know it's going to break it up a little bit, but just quickly, does anybody have any announcements that need to be made? There we will be having a Bible study starting Wednesday um, at 7 o'clock using Zoom, if you're interested. It is basically related to this, this um, next four weeks theme on love. So if you would like to join us, let me know. I'll get you the material. Um, and um, you can, it, it's, it's really a, an open discussion kind of thing. So it's, it's a, it'll be a lot of fun and enjoyable. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, there should be a, a reopening task force meeting after church today. I believe Zoom. I believe it was on the calendar, so I assume so. Yeah. So, Jimmy. Are we going to be here? Okay. Okay. So it'll be right after the service. Happy birthday to Helen, 93 years young. And we'll also do a shout out for a beautiful young lady in the back here, Miss Wendy. Her birthday was the 2nd of September. So happy birthday to her as well. Any other announcements? Excellent, okay. So now we'll get back into our service, get back into our mind, and talk with God. I'm going to be reading the scripture, Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. This ends our reading. Amen. I'll let you keep going.
Loving Large is the theme for our next four weeks. Um, we were able to find some material to help support that. But I think the biggest thing that I really want us to look at in, in this whole series is how do we find love, not only in scriptures, but in our lives. And so we started with the, probably one of the best known scriptures about love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So let's look at this particular scripture at first. It is a question that some of the leaders of the Jewish people decided to put before Jesus, more or less to catch him. They've done that before. They've asked questions like, um, if a man dies, leaves his wife, his brother marries the wife, that brother dies and marries another brother, and that brother dies and marries, marries the same woman again, when they all die, who the, who's going to be the wife and the husband in heaven? Okay? So that was one. Another one that they asked, um, for instance, might have been, uh, who is my neighbor? A great question that Jesus answered with the Good Samaritan. So they have asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? How many commandments are in the Bible for the, for the Hebrew people? Any idea? I think it's around 256. Okay? We think of, oh, well, it's the Ten Commandments. But there are a lot of other commandments that the people had to live by. And this was not one of the big ten. But this was one of those others. And this question that Jesus answered, he begins by giving the answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, which is part of something that was said daily by a Jewish individual because it's part of the Shema. The Shema was, came from the book of Deuteronomy. Um, it, it consisted of five verses, and I'm going to read the whole Shema to you. It's, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, you shall bind them in a, as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes, and they shall write them on the doorposts of their house and on your gates. So Jesus gave this first part that every one of the Jewish people there would know. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And as they probably contemplated a little bit about that, Jesus went on. He didn't stop there because he saw this next one just about as important. Because then he goes on and he says, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Again, not one of the big ten, but it is found in Leviticus. And it is in a number of commandments. The one just before it is, don't make different animals, different kinds of animals, and the one right after it is, don't wear clothes woven of two kinds of materials. But it was an important commandment for Jesus. And if you really look at his ministry in the community, it's obvious. So the big commandment, the great commandment, what we call it now, is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Those are pretty big requirements. We need to love God with everything that we have. And while it charges us, recharges us, to find that relationship, to build on that relationship. It's also a way for us to recognize the power and importance of God, not only in our lives, but in the world. 
Think about what that really is in our lives. If we really live as if we love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul and all our, all our mind, maybe things would be a little different in this world. If that really was the focus of what Christians were doing in this world, it might be a different place. So this whole idea of loving God and neighbor, when he presented it to the leaders, they had nothing more to say. If you look at all the basic commandments, there's not much that doesn't relate to those two particular scriptures. Loving our neighbor. You know, there was a, a young boy when I was in Dunkirk. His name was Billy. And an, an issue had arisen in our community through um, a program that was going on. And he learned about children in another country who were struggling. They were struggling going to school, not because there wasn't a school available, but because it wasn't free. And maybe they could get a scholarship into the school, but then they didn't have the right clothes to wear. And they didn't, weren't able to buy the books. And they weren't able to even buy a pencil. And so this young man took his money, his own personal money, to start his, his campaign. This boy was probably about maybe six or seven at the time. He started this campaign and raised hundreds of dollars and sent it to the program that was going to help a number of children, not just one, but a number of children, go to school. If that isn't changing the world, especially for those young people who are able to now go to school, if that isn't changing the world, I don't know what is. But his understanding of his place as a Christian brought this to the forefront, and he chose to do something about it. But as adults, life is a little different for us. We know the world's in trouble. At least if you listen to the news, that it is. There's the pandemic, of course. There's hunger in some places. Some places food is stockpiled. In other places, there's a scarcity. We know that there are wars going on, that there are refugees trying to escape these battles. We know there are some places that take children and train them to be soldiers. As we look at the news, we find we live in a distracted world. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just focus on doing the right things, being the right kind of person? If there weren't all these other problems, and we, we get caught up in these distractions, we know our world is basically unstable. We know that there are financial problems. There's an unsurety, if that's a word. We know that there's volatile people out there. We know there is definitely hunger. We know there's greed. We know there's injustice. And we think about those and we get so distracted because they tend to bring us down. What can I do? How can I stop this? How can I live right? Our world is full of the children of God. We are all part of this wonderful creation that God has given to us. And we are all made to love God and to love each other. If we allow these distractions of the world to overtake us, the very purpose for our existence diminishes and maybe even becomes eliminated. If we tend to focus so much on making money, having power, having the right place, our position in society, we forget that our goal, by Christ's standard, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. We begin, if we keep that our focus, 
that we begin to be able to change not only ourselves, but the people around us. There's a story of, uh, of a man who needed to change, thought he needed to change the world. So he went to the world leaders and he told them the changes that needed to be made. And nothing happened. So he decided to go to my local governments. So he went to his state and talked to his governor. No changes happened. Well, he'll bring it to the local level. So he went to his local town and no changes happened. Well, I'll tell my family what they need to do. So he went to his family and he told them of all these things that they needed to do and nothing happened. And suddenly he realized that the only person that he could change was himself. And if he changed himself and lived the way he was trying to encourage other people to live, then others would see that. And they would begin to see what explore why he's different and maybe change themselves. We can encourage people all we want, but the only person we can change is ourself. So if you ever see yourself, well, why don't they live this way? Why don't we live this way? Why don't I live this way? It's a big dream to think we can change the world. But think about what a handful of disciples did. You're sitting thousands of miles away from where Jesus taught, and yet you were impacted because a handful of people changed and began to live what he was preaching, Jesus was preaching. We began, they began to share this love of God and love of neighbor with others. Most of them were killed. But that love shone through and allowed people's lives to totally change. We need to love the world in a very large way. Not just with people we agree with, but with all people. We need to love this world as if it was God's creation. And I believe it is. We need to stop allowing the distractions of our lives to take us away with that real focus. There was a study that was done a few years ago with um, teenagers and young adults on multitasking. We all heard that. We all know that. I mean, here you go. You have to do all these things at the same time. And they did this test, and they found out that these people could do 10 things at the same time, but with no quality. They could do them, but nothing was done well. They could say that they completed something, but the value of what they did was very low. And it has resulted in people's attention span changing from 12 minutes to five. That's a big difference in how people are able to pay attention and follow through with things. Sometimes in our friendships and at work, at church, at play, we feel like people want something all the time from us. That we are always distracted from our lives to work with someone else. That's easy for me to see right now when I'm living with my son and grandchildren and daughter-in-law, and those little ones take a lot of attention. They take a lot of focus. But they're also 
a way we distribute our love. So maybe that's not the distraction I'm talking about. But there are a number of distractions that we have in our lives that pull us away from the important thing. And they come from all levels, including church. Church is a good place to come for meetings. If you want to go to a meeting, come to a church. We have them all the time. We have one right after church. And sometimes, while important, these meetings take us away from what is truly important, to show our love to God and to show our love to the people around us. So let's take a look a little bit at our distracted lives. When we become so distracted, even though we might be doing something for someone else, we're really focusing on us. Do I get their approval? Do I move up in the corporate ladder? Do I get the okay from somebody who's important to me? Will it maybe mean I get more money? We think about those all the time. But when we focus on these two commandments, the love of God, this loving large, we begin to stop focusing on ourselves and begin to focus on others. If we look at churches all over this country and even over all over this world, we begin to see how that affects the church. Well, I come to church to get this, or I come to church to get that. We forget we come to church to be God's disciples, to be Christ's disciples. And that means we need to love large. We need to focus on the needs of others, not only physical needs, like we've been doing the masks out on that tree, and I think that's wonderful. It's a need for a lot of people. But we also forget that people need physical, personal love. Churches want to know what they can get. People who come to church often want to know what they can get out of it. Well, I, I've, I've had friends tell me, well, I don't need to go to church. I can go up on the, on the woods and I feel God there. I go to church and all they want is my money. But what has happened to us? Have we, as a church, forgot, the how, forgot how to love large? That's one of the biggest problems I'm seeing in this pandemic. You have to sit socially distanced. You're not even supposed to congregate afterwards and talk to each other. We certainly can't have a cup of coffee together. And church was always a place where that could happen. For that was a way in which we could renew our relationship with other Christians as we went out into the world. So we need to remember we need to focus on loving others. Would that be a change for you? I'm hoping not. I think many of us do express that love for God. How do we stay focused? You know, a lot of times I think I don't have enough time in my day to get everything I want to do, that I think I need to do, and that busyness distracts me. It often pulls me away from the prime directive. If, you wanna, if you're a Star Trek fan, the prime directive of loving God and loving neighbor. We need to focus on the worth and the value of all people, not just people that look like us, not just people that talk like us, not just people who worship like us. We need to find the value in all because all are children of God whether they have a faith or not. 
we need to remember that there is a value. How do we focus? I'm going to present you for the next four weeks, each week with a new challenge. And most of, the, of them will be related to loving neighbor. But this week, through this challenge I'm going to present you, I want you to focus on love of God. That just that first part, I want you to take five minutes a day, just five, you can find five minutes, to, to accomplish nothing. Whoa. I don't want you to produce anything, but what I would like you is to find that five minutes to either sit, whatever, before God and offer your love to God. You might do it in prayer, you might do it in some sort of thanksgiving, you might sing a song, or you might just sit in silence. We can't do anything in the world if we try to do it alone, if we try to do it just with ourselves. For we need to first love God so that we may truly rely upon God. And that's how we begin to change the world. A few months ago, almost a year ago, I started going to a spiritual director in Michigan when I was there. And we met once a month. And it was really helpful, but he came up with a suggestion one time. Because here I am sitting trying to work with a church who's struggling and I'm a lot of time spent on those things that need to be done. And he suggested that I take one day a month and call it my God day. I can go for a hike, I can go sit in the woods, I can sit in my house, I can sit on the back deck, I could go to the library. But I take time and focus on my relationship with God. That's what I'm asking you to do every week, every day, for five minutes a day, to focus on your relationship to God. It's actually uplifting and helpful. Let us pray. Holy, wondrous, and gracious God, our love comes out to you. Accept our love and accept us as people who are struggling with the distractions of life that we may remember the calling you have given to us to love you with all our heart, with all our soul and our mind, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. We have prayer first, so. Right? Yep. Um, would you join me in prayer? And there will be a time for a silent prayer. Oh God, no matter where we are or where we are going or what we're even doing, we know that we find our help in you. You are the creator and the sustainer of all that has been made and will be made. And yet, the immensity of creation does not distract you. For you care for all. We know that it is true of your care for us too. To do not daydream or become weary in your care for us. We thank you that you not only watch over us with diligence, but that you will guide us so that we will not fall, so that we will not stumble. 
Whether we are awake or asleep, we know you are there, sheltering and protecting us with your love. We know that you watch over all living things, for you have in the past, and we know you are now. Your promise holds for the future and for eternity, and we praise and thank you for that. We know that you hold us each dear in your heart. Hold those who are suffering with the COVID virus in your loving arms and tenderly draw them into your love. Assure them that they are not alone and give them the courage and faith for all that is to come. Strengthen those who care for them and treat them and guide those who do the research for treatment and vaccines. Christ our Lord, long ago in Galilee, made many who were sick and suffering needed friends and family to bring them to your side. We are confident in your goodness. And we now bring to, to you those who need your healing touch, whether in body, mind, or spirit, as we offer our silent prayers to you. O Jesus, lover of all, bring healing, bring peace. Amen. Our offering today will be taken as you go out. There will be a paper bag that you can drop your offering in. Um, and so I would like at this point to dedicate our offering if you would join me in prayer. Giver of all good gifts, how can we thank you for your never-ending love? Even our very lives are not enough. Accept these offerings as tokens of our gratitude and signs of our hope in the realm you have promised, the kingdom for which we wait. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whenever someone needs a neighbor 
God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Blessed are you. You are the sons and daughters of God. For you shall be holy as God your Lord is holy. And you shall live in peace and love by trusting in the promise of God. Go in peace. I ask that as you leave, uh, you remember social distancing.